In this video, we'll pit the two major iPad 3D applications against each other, UMake versus Shaper 3D. We'll compare them in different categories and then see which one comes out on top. The last time I looked at the 3D on the iPad, I didn't even cover UMake. The application was still taking its first baby steps. The modeling operations weren't that complete. The interface was lacking in clarity. The documentation was minimal. You get the point. Thankfully, a lot has changed since then, but the same also applies for Shaper 3D. Since the last video, there were a ton of improvements done to the interface and the overall workflow, which makes modeling in Shaper 3D an even better experience than before. So Umake has a tough competition, but let's see how they stack up. Both applications have a really fast development cycle, with the features and bug fixes coming out weekly or every other week. There seems to be fierce competition on who's going to get the bigger piece of the 3D pie. This of course is uh, great news for us, the end user. It's obvious that the developers are putting in some serious work. Things are constantly improving and I'm guessing really soon we will have a solution that beats modeling on a desktop. In some ways, it already is better, since the mobility the iPad offers cannot even be beat by a laptop. But no matter how far or close we are to this day, having such a fast iteration cycle is doing wonders for both apps. Umake definitely needs to make some bigger strides to catch up to Shaper's tools, but it's slowly getting there. So as far as development speed, both applications are equal. So I would call this one a tie. Next up. 3D can get very complicated, so good and extensive documentation is absolutely necessary. Thankfully, both Umake and uh, Shaper 3D have very good supporting material. I'm not talking about uh, just a simple manual, which uh, both have, but other friendlier ways of uh, learning, like videos or asking a specific question in a forum. Umake and Shaper 3D have that covered really, really well. It seems to me that both applications watch what the other one does, so if one creates a dedicated learning section within the app, a few weeks later you will see the same thing in the other one as well. I've seen that happen time and time again with uh, these two. But back to the supporting material. Shaper 3D's uh, learning area is very nicely laid out, with different project-based tutorials and collections of uh, short videos about specific areas of the program. Umake also has a learning area, and I feel it has a slight edge over Shaper 3D, mostly due to the organization of the tutorials. Umake has this uh, dedicated area where each part of the program is divided into smaller, bite-sized information, so it makes learning specific parts of the program really, really fast. The videos vary in length, but most of them are just a minute long, so if you're a new user, you can pretty quickly jump into the program and start using it with confidence. But even if you haven't checked the learning area, both applications do a great job training the user while modeling. If you've used the tool for the first time, a small pop-up will appear with a video describing how to use it. Usually these videos are extremely short, but very, very helpful. There were several times where I was uh, struggling to figure out how to do a specific thing, and then I would get that pop-up video and immediately understand how the tool works. Both applications also have uh, helpful text tips to guide you through the modeling procedures. Umake has a slight edge when it comes to learning the basics really fast, but Shaper has a better overall user experience when it comes to guiding the user. So I would call this one a tie as well. Now let's move on to the meat and potatoes of the apps. <laughs> this is where things get interesting, or <laughs> infuriating depending on the app used. Shaper 3D is a CAD application through and through. Once you learn the tools and understand how the geometry is produced, you will be able to model super fast with it. Umake also belongs in that uh, CAD category, but in some cases it feels more like a fusion between a CAD app, a polygonal based modeler, and a brainstorming tool. It has a bit of an identity crisis, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. With this uh, quick development cycle, this fusion of ideas might be the thing needed to push Umake ahead. Only time will tell. One feature though I absolutely love in Umake is the ability to create surfaces without any thickness. So we can create the two splines for example, select them, and then just tap on this little icon and we have a surface created. 
this is not something we can do in Shaper 3D at all. At the moment we can only work with uh, closed shapes. The other great thing with UMake uh, is the ability to sketch out an idea before committing to any modeling. We can be very loose with it and uh, through the use of sketch planes we can create an idea relatively fast. The only bad thing about it is that once we have that sketch we can't really do anything more with it. So the tools to draw geometry won't really work with these uh, freehand sketches. That would have been a really really powerful feature. On the other hand though, Shaper 3D doesn't have any sketching ability at all. Unfortunately, <laughs> this is where you make set advantages end. Shaper's uh, modeling tools and overall workflow just blow UMake's tools out of the water. Shaper is the definition of fast and efficient modeling. Let's build a really simple example in both applications and you'll get what I mean. Let's try Shaper first. I will start by building two different sized cubes. Right off the bat, Shaper gets some bonus points here. Apart from the ability to just uh, draw straight lines and get the rectangle shape we need, we have a dedicated rectangle shape which uh, speeds things up considerably. And on top of that we have different ways to draw that rectangle. Now let's uh, extrude the rectangles and create the cubes we need. Beveling this area here is really simple. We need uh, to use a boolean operation first to join the two cubes and then we can work on the fillet. Now this is where things get a little bit tricky because order matters here. We can easily create bad geometry if we're not aware of that. So if we first uh, fillet these two edges first and then bevel this edge here, we end up with a geometry that is not ideal. We need to bevel this edge first and then adjust these two. As you can see now the geometry is nice and clean. Let's also bevel the top. The great thing about Shaper which I believe wasn't there in the earlier iterations is the fact that these beveled areas are always editable. So if we're not satisfied with the curvature we can adjust it quite easily just by tapping in one of these areas and typing in a different value. Now let's say we want to create a hole here. We can easily draw on that surface by letting Shaper know what sketching plane we want to use. So if I double tap on that surface, the camera moves to that plane and all snapping and grid operations are working only on that specific plane. This is extremely handy and I wish other applications had that as well. Whatever sketching we do is going to be on that surface. If we now switch back to the perspective view, we can see how the rectangle was drawn. We can now use the projection command to get that sketch on the curved surface. And now all we need to do is push the surface in. When rounding the surface, we need to first round the sides and then the edges. As I mentioned before, everything is still live, so we can adjust the rounding to our liking. Without talking, this whole modeling session would have taken maybe a minute, something like that. Now let's see where things break down in UMake. Even though this whole modeling scenario is quite simple, in UMake it ends up being a really really involved process. Keep in mind that these operations are done multiple times when modeling, so things quickly add up. Let's start with the rectangles first. As you can see, right from the get-go we need to do more steps to create them. We need to draw the lines one by one. UMake has a library of primitive shapes, but it takes more taps to get there than to create the rectangles line by line. Let's count the taps. One, two, three, four, five, and then we can drag the rectangle out. But as you can see, it's not the shape we want. It's a rounded rectangle. So even if it was the shape we wanted, it would have taken more steps than just drawing it ourselves. Now let's go ahead and draw the second one. Now that we have both, let's extrude the two shapes. We've now hit the second problem in our modeling session. We created an extra bit of geometry that is going to give us trouble. So let's try out the fillet command first to show you what I mean. As you can see the geometry produced is a mess. So we need to get rid of this line first. Let me do that. And now let's try again. This is much better, but if we rotate around, you will notice other issues with the geometry. So long story short, in order for us to create one unified piece of geometry, we need to get rid of the extra loops. So not only we need to get rid of this edge here, but we also need to get rid of the edge underneath. 
we now finally have this one single object. And now the fill command will work properly. It's not the end of the world that we need to do these extra steps, but as you can see, doing the same thing in Shaper is much, much faster. Now the next snag we hit is adjusting the fillet. We basically have no option for that. So we need to be sure that the value we use is the right one from the very beginning. Otherwise we need to undo, select again all the faces and run the fillet command again, which works fine if we're at the beginning of the modeling session. But if we've progressed quite a lot, going back to fix this part would cost quite a bit of time. Now let's try to fillet the top part of the cube. We need again to select all these surfaces and then hit the fillet command. Once more, we've hit another issue. The geometry is completely ruined. What we need to do here to make this work is to delete this face here. Once we do that, we can now run the command without any issues. But we now need to deal with one more thing, closing this area. We need to go to the top view, select carefully all the edges, and then the loft command appears. We can now close the hole. Of course, if we need to do an adjustment, we need to repeat the process all over again. If we go back to Shaper just to see the difference, everything is live and adjustable. This is a much more efficient way of working. Another thing that makes things even slower to model in Humake is the selection detection. I've had countless times where it's super obvious that the thing I'm trying to select is a really huge face, but the system decides to select the edge instead. To bypass the issue, we need to zoom in and then select the face. By adding all these things up, it's easy to see that modeling in Humake requires patience. But apart from time, there's also things that we cannot really do in Humake. If you remember, we need to create an indentation on this curved surface here. We have an option in the Humake to draw on the surface, but Humake doesn't shift the camera on the plane needed, so we kinda have to find the right view ourselves. And even if we do that, the surface afterwards looks like it's ruined. Most importantly though, we can't really extrude the surface. The only thing we can do is create a hole, and that's about it. There's also other weird uh, order issues uh, with Humake, or it might just be a bug, I'm not sure. Let's take this uh, simple example. We have these two splines and we want to create a surface. I loft the middle section first and then the sides. So far so good. Now let's say we want to round the edges. We'll choose the different faces and run the fillet command and as you can see we get a mess of a geometry. Here's the interesting part. If we now undo and draw two lines here and then run the fillet command everything is fine. I have no clue why we get these wildly different results, but it's something you always need to be aware of when working with uh, Humake. It's really easy to produce bad geometry. So apart from the regular part of uh, trying to figure out how to build a specific model, you always need to have at the back of your head the kind of uh, procedure you need to take in order for Humake not to glitch out. As you can see, Umake needs a little bit more development time to get to Shaper's level of uh, modeling. Umake has its benefits like the creation of an open surface, but I would trade that in a second if everything else worked without issues and was as robust as Shaper 3D. There's also other small UI additions in uh, Shaper 3D that improve the day-to-day -day work, for example, picking views. The icons uh, Humake has are absolutely fine, but it takes a second or two when you're working on a model to figure out that this is the right view and this is the left view, or that this is the top and this is the bottom. With Shaper, as you rotate the camera, this little widget shows clearly the three views. So I can select, for example, the back view here and go straight there. Or I can double tap and go to the top view. Or double tap on the view widget to reset the view. These look like small things, but they add up quite fast. So this category, which is actually the most important one, goes hands down to Shaper 3D. Umake has some nice things that Shaper 3D hasn't, like the really quick selection of multiple objects with the lasso tool, but Shaper 3D has a ton of other nice little things, like the automatic organization of objects, sketches, and images, which makes managing all these things very easy. So, I'm afraid the scale tips heavily on Shaper's side. But let's move on to the next big topic. 
Shaper 3D is the more expensive of the two. A year's uh, subscription costs uh, 240 US dollars, while you make with the 50% off promo costs less than half of that. It's $100. But even if without the promo, it's still cheaper. It's 192 US dollars. On top of that, Umake has a perpetual version, which they don't really advertise anywhere, but it's offered as a plan when you go through the purchase. I haven't uh, saved an image and it doesn't show up anymore in the app because uh, I've already paid for the subscription, but I believe it was around 460 euros. This might sound like a lot of money, but keep in mind that it's a one-off thing and once you pay that, you get the updates for the rest of the app's life. So this one easily goes out to Umake. So what's the tally? Just looking at the numbers, it's a tie, but to be honest, there's no comparison. Shaper 3D is far and beyond the better app of the two. It's on a class of its own. It's definitely the most expensive one, but the features alone make up for that. I support you make with a one year subscription, but I also don't want to tear my hair out each time I model on the iPad, so I'll be using mostly Shaper 3D. But of course this is up to you, the price difference is uh, quite big if you consider you makes 50% uh, off promo, so it just comes down to how much you're willing to spend on a 3D modeling app on a tablet. And with that we've reached the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it and if you did, feel free to spread the word. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.